G'day guys, how are we? And we are ready for another night of Astro Imaging providing these few clouds here to go away, which according to the weather data is going to happen. However, weather data isn't always accurate. So I'm sure plenty of you guys have had that uh, issue where it says it's going to be clear, but it doesn't. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, um, I'm going to explain just a little bit as to what I have here and what I like to uh, image with. And that is my twin Celestron RAS-8 telescopes. Just love imaging F2. Um, on the back of them, I've got two ZWO ASI um, focuses and complete with temperature uh, probes to maintain a good focus throughout the night. On top of the Prima Luce uh, Eagle 4 computer, and I love this thing for astro imaging. Now, if you're new to astrophotography, um, the ZWO ASI Air System is probably the uh, the better way to go. It is uh, very user friendly and easy um, to get up and going in a lot quicker of time. However, this here is for more, I'd say, possibly advanced setups um, like this, where you can install your own sort of software that you want to be able to use throughout the night, as well as control other um, devices that the uh, ZWO brand can't control. Now, as I run twin RASs, I run twin cameras. And on the front, I've got ZWO um, ASI 294 mm Pro camera. This, um, this uh, particular camera here, obviously, is monochrome, and it captures hydrogen alpha data um, through an astronomic uh, max FR filter. And then on this RASA right here, we have the ASI 294MC Pro camera, which is the color version of the mono. And that there runs an astronomic L1 um, UV IR cut filter. So tonight's mission is going to be uh, two objects. Now, object number one is going to be the Tarantula Nebula. I've been a little bit sneaky lately, and I've actually already captured some data of these two two objects. So the Tarantula Nebula um, to my south. We're going to image that for maybe until uh, uh, about one o'clock. Um, in the morning and then by then our good old friend Orion has risen and I'm going to switch to Orion and we're going to capture some data there. Now I'm going to be using really fast exposures um, so for Orion and also the tarantula I'll be looking at somewhere around about the 15 second exposure mark. Um, my whole philosophy <laughs> is shorter exposures but more of them. With this, you've got to make sure you do have a, uh, a pretty strong computer to be able to um, stack all those images. And at the moment, I've got about 400, about 400 photographs um, of each object. And I want to uh, continue adding on to that um, to reduce noise and bring out more detail. Now with the hydrogen alpha side of things, I'm going to be bringing that down because I used to shoot it around about 120 seconds. I'm going to bring that down to uh, maybe around about 45 second um, exposure times with the HA and that's on both targets as well and we're going to again shoot a lot of uh, hydrogen alpha um, exposures and stack them to reduce noise so when it gets a little bit darker we can fire these two beasts here up capture some quality photons and hopefully by the end of uh, tonight's imaging session we have uh, a couple of really nice um, astrophotos so uh, yeah, let's just wait for the sun to go down and the stars to come out. guys I think it's time to uh, begin our polar alignment uh, process and recently I've been using um, SharpCap for polar alignment I found that program to be absolutely fantastic so let's dive straight in and start polar aligning <laughs> Thank you. 
over uh, 200 frames now for the uh, Tarantula Nebula and soon I'll be uh, slewing across to the Great Orion Nebula and capture some data um, for uh, the, the Orion <laughs> Nebula shot that I've already got. It's starting to get a little bit tired. Um, I just want to do a big shout out to uh, everyone who was watching or came along for the uh, the live stream of the uh, of me capturing the data um, with the twins. Now, there was a bit of a funny glitch, and that was that uh, PhD, um, my PhD guiding on one rasa was showing different on another rasa in Nina, and uh, I think I've worked out what that glitch actually was. Um, when you go into set up your, uh, your image um, sequence, and you can tick um, whether or not in Nina you want to start guiding. Well, I had to start guiding on both of the image sequences, um, whereas whatever uh, Rasa you're using as a, as a clone, um, you don't tick the uh, um, start guiding sequence, if, if that makes sense. I'm, I'm getting pretty tired, guys. Um, so yeah, we're going to finish off um, this uh, second sequence that I'm doing capturing a bit more data again on the tarantula then still across through our Rhine and hopefully hopefully we have uh, a couple of really nice images out of tonight alright so uh, yeah I'm going to uh, hit the hay get some sleep while I can and uh, fingers crossed everything goes well if you've enjoyed this video please give me a big thumbs up if you're uh, new to this channel please hit that subscribe button and please leave a comment if you've got any questions. Alright, on that note, I'm going to hit the hay. So, until next time, guys, take it easy.